Okay, Bobby, July 11th, big, big day. Uh, maybe gets pushed back a couple of weeks or so, but let's assume that on July 11th, the sentencing hearing moves forward and the judge does what you and Mansfield predict, which is uh, sentence Donald Trump to some jail time because of his conduct, because of his refusal to accept responsibility, because of his continued attacks uh, on the judicial system and on the process. Typically, when you get sentenced, will, would you get months before you have to turn yourself in? Or, or how would that typically work, recognizing that it may not work the same for Donald Trump, who will be in an election that will be coming up fairly you know, soon after July 11? Well, typically, uh, if it's a violent crime, he'd be in custody right now. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. White collar crime. Uh, Defendants generally um, are not remanded at the time of the verdict. Uh, they get an opportunity to um, ask for a new trial and they get an opportunity to argue sentencing. So at the sentencing, if there is an arguable claim uh, on appeal, um, there may be times on this state side that a judge would allow uh, someone to remain out on bail pending appeal. Um, we know from uh, our talks with uh, about Mark Riley Thomas that it's more typical on the federal side. Generally, in the state side, when somebody gets sentenced, um, particularly on violent crimes, but sometimes on uh, white collar crime, particularly cases where a lot of money has been stolen or defrauded or part of a fraud case, they get sent. When they get sentenced, they're going into custody. Wow. Um, so that's going to be a big um, factor here and uh, bears watching. I, I, the whole world will be watching, you know, on that sentencing date, whether the judge remands um, Donald Trump into custody if he is, in fact, sent to prison. Let me ask you this, Mansfield. So let's assume again, walking through this July 11th hearing, uh, the prosecution makes this argument for why there should be jail time. They they outline all of the attacks that Donald Trump has made on the system, on the case, on the verdict, on just about everybody involved. The defense gets up and makes whatever argument it can make. Uh, their argument pretty much so far has been he's running for president and all of this is designed to uh, somehow thwart his efforts of becoming the president. And now they're going to add to that argument that the, the verdict is flawed because it's based on the very flawed and tortured, as they would call a testimony of Michael Cohen. Of course, they're going to be arguing for no jail time, for no penalty at all, maybe a fine or, or maybe some kind of probation. Uh, but assuming that that doesn't work with this judge and there is a, a determination by the judge that there should be jail time and he should be remanded on that day, what happens if he then still wins the presidency? Because the fact that he gets arrested and they have to make arrangements, uh, we know Eric Adams has already said, mayor of New York, that they're already making arrangements to uh, be able to accept him into their prison system the way they would any other prisoner, you know, keeping in mind that Secret Service uh, is involved. But if he is sitting behind bars in July, in August, and there's an election in November, uh, and say by some weird fluke, he wins. Would he have the ability to then free himself, to overturn the conviction, to pardon himself? Like what powers would he have as president of the United States? Well, this is where you, the country finds itself right now in a legal state of trauma that's been created by Trump in this, this matter. Generally speaking, People of high morals, of high principles, would not have put the country through this process. They would not have put their party through this process. They would not have put their followers through this process. Because when it backfires, look at what we end up with. A convicted felon that now you are supporting for president. I, I think that we learned in law school, and it's always stuck with me, for every wrong, there's supposed to be a remedy, right? For every wrong, there's supposed to be a remedy. This is a question of first impression. There have been other congressional politicians, maybe even senators that have been convicted of a felony and they've tried to hold on to their positions in Congress, even though they were convicted as felons. But this is the first time a former president 
running for a, a new term has ever been convicted. So this is a new area for the courts and lawyers to deal with. And I almost sometimes want to suggest that uh, that this issue should be reviewed as an injunction, maybe in federal court or federal or state court, because no way, no how, did the founders of the Constitution and of this country ever believe that this scenario could happen? What do you mean, criminal, man? So when you say that, that has indicated. Say that again. What do you mean when you say an injunction, handled like an injunction? There is no provision in the Constitution that says a convicted felon can't run for office, can't run for president. But that's because they never thought that could ever happen. An injunction would be a document filed in court, a mini lawsuit filed in court saying these are the reasons why, with all this record in front of us, that this man is not qualified and should be declared ineligible to to further pursue the presidency of the United States. Only in a, in a world gone mad would we not think of doing that right now. Right. I got you. Okay. Understood. Understood. We need Lawrence Tribe or someone to file that motion on behalf of the citizens, the United States. Citizens of the United States, That's we right. need uh, uh, Emeritus Professor uh, Lawrence Tribe to do that. Uh, we're running out of time. Just, just real quickly, let me ask you this, Bobby. Again, that question: Would Donald Trump be able to pardon himself if he is elected president uh, and free himself from jail if he's sitting in a jail come November? He won't be able to pardon himself because it's a state crime. I think what uh, legal observers are asking: Will the Supreme Court interject itself here? once the appeal is filed and it goes through the, the New York levels and eventually gets to the Supreme Court. We already know that Justice Alito has said that a uh, president should be immune from anything. And so there's a real fear here that if it does get to the Supreme Court and he's in custody, the Supreme Court would step in and free him basically on the argument that he's the elected president of the United States and he really can't do that behind, from behind bars. Yeah, and there's a possibility that Joe Biden may want to pardon him as well. We can think of lots of reasons why he would want to do that in terms of the stability of our democracy. We are out of time. Thank you so much, uh, Bobby Grace and Mansfield Collins. Always a lot smarter when we spend an hour with you. So folks are going to feel like they got a law degree after watching and listening to this show uh, on and the shows we've done on these big pressing legal cases. Again, thanks so much. Uh, next voice, did you hear?